Hey guys, welcome back to the Backyard Russia channel. A little bit about us. We are an Australian family who have moved to Russia in 2019, about four and a half years ago. And we have since had three children here. We show life in Russia, what it's like, what are the shops like, what is industry like, what is the infrastructure like? Is, there, is it getting upgraded? Is it getting kept up? How is development in Russia, especially with all these sanctions? You can find that all out in our channel uh, on the videos that we've made. Subscribe and check out the channel on the channel page. It's all there. Today we're going to be doing a video with the expat American who also does videos like that. We're going to be interviewing each other. On his channel, I'll be sharing something that is exclusive information. I have not shared this story with anybody. It's a little bit about my personal history and uh, I think you guys will find it interesting. So definitely head over there. The link will be in the description and in the cards at the end of the video. So stay to the end. And I will also be asking him a question. Uh, well, he will be sharing with us a story that has not been shared on the internet anywhere else. So definitely stay to the end, and we'll see you in the interview, guys. Uh, so let's just start by, for anybody watching the app channel who doesn't know you, who is the expat American? Very good question. Um, so I'm a man with kids, first and foremost. You can hear one of them rolling cars on the floor behind me right now. Uh, but I am a Floridian. I was born and raised in Florida. I was born in 1974. I'm 48 years old. I went to film school at New York University in New York. So I, you know, I spent a lot of my time in Florida and New York. And then I moved to California and worked in the Hollywood movie business. So I did that for a few years. Uh, went back to Florida, opened up a small business, um, made some money, became an older man, had more children. And my wife was born in the Soviet Union, so she was getting homesick. And we decided, oh, what the heck, let's go live in Russia for a while. And uh, eight days after moving here, uh, the special military operation began. And we were like, whoa, what's going on? Did we make a mistake? What's happening? And we were... Yeah, I was definitely concerned for my kids. And so since I had the, the film background, I decided I would start a YouTube channel and I would let the West know. I would show the West that Russia is a normal place. And I would do it by making shows that are informative, but more importantly, entertaining and funny. And every episode is about something specific. We're really trying to make tight, fun, cool I'd say 20 yeah. minute dramedies about normal life in Russia. Yeah. And um, yeah, I've, I've watched some of your uh, videos. I've found out some pretty interesting stuff. I think okay. one of the ones uh, I saw was where you went and did, was it like a like a day with um, Father Joseph Gleason? Yeah, yeah. Did that you? one's popular. Yeah, Father yeah. uh, yeah. Joseph Gleason. He's uh, an American who became an Orthodox priest and then moved to Russia to be an Orthodox priest. So it's definitely a fascinating think, um, story. He's a fairly, I don't know, popular, but he's, he's mentioned quite a bit in the kind of move to Russia circles. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, yeah. I noticed. So it was, very, it was a very interesting video. Ha have you had this where people straight away just, because you live in Russia, they straight away dismiss your opinion or your views as being just either either state propaganda or you're you're not informed. Um, you basically you can't get access to good information uh, because you live in Russia, and therefore everything you say is just going to be repeating what the government says. Is that something that you get? Oh yeah, yeah, definitely, definitely. People think that uh, I've lost my mind, and, and I've, I've I've told all my friends about the channel, and sadly some of them have watched the channel, and they're like, oh my gosh, Joe's crazy. Um, Especially since, you know, my wife and I got the chance to speak in Russian Parliament, go to Duma. Um, and we've been, we went to the St. Petersburg Economic Forum, International Economic Forum. We spoke there. Then the Wall Street Journal has contacted me and they wrote an article about me. And so people, I think that a lot of people that used to know me, they look at me and they think that I am now uh, infamous, not famous. But I'm, I'm uh, like I've turned to the dark side. Okay. Well Slight te technical difficulty there. So, um, yeah, like what you were saying about the um, about being interviewed by Wall Street and stuff and being uh, infamous, I I've noticed that like even if the media looks at you like in a positive light, they still sometimes get the facts all wrong. Yeah. So like if they have 
they, they just put out what they want the audience to hear. So they take whatever they've done the interview of and then they spin it to whatever the message is. Yeah, but, yeah. yeah. I've, had, I've had some Russian uh, news channels interview me and, and they've innocently gotten the facts wrong. But it's not, it's not a big deal. They still have the heart of what I feel and think. Um, yeah. But then with the interviews that can be more hostile, like when someone from the West interviews you, they can be very friendly and talk to you for a long time and ask you lots of questions. And then when they finally post the interview, um, they take maybe 5% of the interview and, and they present in a certain way and um, yeah. they can make you look bad. So, you know. But it's, but it's, uh, good. it's it, unfortunate. It keeps me sharp, keeps me on my toes. I kind of like it. I'm, I'm oh. kind of, I'm, I'm like yeah. centered. I'm myself. I'm gonna, you know, answer honestly, and uh, it's an exciting time for sure. So, um, like as far as moving from America to Russia, did you have to? Did you bring any stuff with you, or did you just grab a few suitcases and uh, fly over? You know, it's funny because I'm I'm 48. I'll be 49 soon. So when I moved, I think I was 47. It's been a year and a half. And so I, I spent practically a full life in the U.S. And I had a house and, and it was full of stuff and an attic full of stuff. And I had a car and I looked into, you know, moving a lot of stuff with me. But it just for me, it was not economically feasible. It just it was if you're not sentimental about this stuff, it's going to be, in my opinion, much better financially just to start over. And I sold my car. I put most of my stuff in my attic. And we packed just a few things as if we were going on vacation. You know, everyone had a backpack and, um, you know, one of those wheeled luggage bags. And, uh, yeah. you know, I, I, I selected toys for my children out of their, their many toys, some of which were toys from when I was a child because I, you know, was in the same country for over 40 years. And uh, we came here with our precious stuff, like like this shirt, for instance, my only my only country boy shirt. Um, but <laughs> all I bought is, I think, a few um, dress shirts um, because of the different speaking engagements that I go on. But other than that, I'm still oh, yeah. out of my luggage, basically. We had the same uh, thing when we came over, basically just suitcases. Yeah, we did the same thing, sold everything. Well, we sold all our stuff. We, we took a few things that were sentimental, like... Um, uh, my parents sent me over my guitar. Nice. Um, I got it. I got it when I was thirteen. And um, wow. Yeah, yeah my wife's son, son, because we're on our second marriage. So she has a Russian son outside of our marriage, and he is nineteen. He's on the show too on on occasion. His name is Alex, and he bought this expensive, fancy guitar that he would practice in America, and he brought that with him. Oh, that uh, that leads me into the uh, the other question. So, when you decided to move to Russia, um, I saw on one of your other videos you mentioned you have uh, some adult children. Did mm -hmm. did they move with you, or or did they decide to stay in America? Um, they all moved with us, except for one that had already moved to Russia ahead of us. Um, so, my wife and I, you know, we were married to other people, and and Christians, and sadly, our marriages fell apart. And in both of our cases, we ended up with the children from our previous marriages. So my oldest child, who is the oldest of the five between my wife and I now, is 23. And so he was ready, he was university age, and he wasn't really sure what he wanted to study. And since we were all living in America, and we knew people in Russia through our church and through my wife's contacts, and we knew that Russia was way cheaper to go to university. Uh, we suggested to him that he go to Russia and go to university there. So he went there and, and did that ahead of us. And this was before we were even thinking about moving. Um, and then the, the world event happened where we were all under lockdown for a couple of years around the world. And um, I, won't, I won't say what it is because you know what it is. And I don't want the video to be suppressed. Sometimes the videos can be suppressed if you say certain words on YouTube. Um, but he, uh, he, he was going to university here and we were living separately in Florida. And then we just decided, because my wife was homesick, let's all move. So we moved, my wife and I, with my daughter from a previous marriage, who is now 19, her son, who is, who is about to turn 19, and our two little children we had together. Uh, Christoph was eight and Maxine who is now four 
And so it's quite a large crew uh, having all these children for sure. But it's, it's been an exciting adventure. And, and now our, our other older ones are in university. So that's three adult kids and two yeah. little kids. Or I say normal kids. Yeah. They're not weird adult children. <laughs> weird adult children. Uh, very good. Uh, so as far as uh, residency goes, how I presume the children have Russian citizenship or how does that work? So, of, of course, my wife was born in the Soviet Union. She has Russian citizenship. Her son that she had here has Russian citizenship. Our two little ones we had together when we were living in America, they got American citizenship. And we also had a va family vacation to Washington, D.C. with their birth certificates. And we applied for their Russian citizenship so that they would be dual citizenship. Um, and then that leaves me and my two from a previous marriage. I now have my residency because I'm married to a Russian woman and my, my other two children, they have visas for going to university. Um, and now my oldest, who's 23, uh, he now has a, a residency. Uh, I'm not sure exactly what type of residency it is, um, but he is able to work in Russia for a certain period of time for several years because of this residency that he's finalizing now. Yeah, because when we, we first came over, I was on student visas. And uh, to start off with, you, you basically, from what I understand, you, under, you um, renew it every year. And uh, we just kind of thought, you know, we'll, we'll get the student visa for the first year. We'll try and get temporary residency in the first year. And then uh, if, we, if, we do, if that doesn't work out, because you have to do a language test to get it. And uh, we thought, oh, if we don't pass the test, you know, we've got another years by the end of three years if we don't know Russian like to be able to pass a little language test then uh, we don't deserve to be in the country but um with the with the way the rules change or world events change everything you know it's um it's nice to be on something a little bit more stable is that something that you noticed like when you got residency as opposed to being on like a tourist visa or uh like having having um uh like a permanent status oh, like absolutely. for instance uh with with covid like could you imagine if you had to leave the country say you went to estonia because you of your uh your six months was coming up you went to estonia and then covid happened the borders all shut like that yeah no, absolutely i mean now that i have residency i don't have to leave um and i feel much better and when i didn't have residency it was just a visa there we were watching the dates on the visa. I'm like, oh man, you know, when might I have to leave? And although we enjoyed the trip to Estonia, it is stressful. Things can go wrong. Like you said, there's a special military operation. Um, and while I was over there, there was word that they might close the border. And like within days of me coming back into Russia, they did close the border temporarily because they decided to, on the Estonia side, to demolish um, a monument from the 40s. From, from the Allied conflict, and um, mm. you know, which is which is crazy, you know. And, and on top of that, um, another crazy story is when we were going to Estonia because only I had to leave. Um, my wife. When when you moved to Russia, what was something that you noticed? Uh, what was like the main difference? Something that was like obvious, the first thing that kind of hit you when you moved to Russia that was different than America, and it can't be the language. <laughs> right, 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 right. Um, well, I mean, you know, I, yeah, if it's not the language, you know, I would say, like I've talked about before, and I mentioned in your interview, the, the cultural difference where Russians prioritize honesty over friendliness. Uh, both things are important. They are friendly, um, but they're going to be honest first. So when you're having a conversation with people and meeting people for the first time, that might be a little bit difficult for you to get used to uh, because in Western culture, I think the priority is to be friendly first and honest second. I mean, both these things are very important. I, I understand, um, but you know, something's going to be first and something's going to be second. And I think that to me, that's what I've kind of sorted out in my head is, is the big difference. Um, but you know, what's amazing. And one of the reasons why I do the channel, one of the themes of the channel is that there isn't that much of a difference. And, you know, especially if you, can't use language as a main difference, it's hard to think of differences. And you end up thinking more about differences between 
small towns and big cities as opposed to this country or that mm -hmm. country. You know, because I can, I can say, start to say, oh, well, Russia's cold and Russia's got a lot of people and Russia's a big city. And, and then I'm like, well, wait a second. I'm describing New York also, you know. <laughs> I've noticed that all um, government uh, systems seem to fail when it comes to, like, websites and stuff. Mm -hmm. like whether that's Australia or Russia, everybody complains about it. Right. No, it's just natural because if it's government, it's not within the capitalist system, so they don't have to compete against other businesses. So you don't have that pressure to make sure it's excellent. So that's just natural. Um, but I do. Well, I, they're not agree. I think Russia's paperwork system, in terms of residency stuff aside, just being a person living here and, and dealing with government paperwork as you do when you need to, taxes and licenses and things like that, it's way better than in the U.S. and it's much more streamlined. And, you know, they have facilities yeah. here in Moscow called My Documenti. Do you guys have those over in Russia where you are? My Documenti? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, I mean, it's beautiful. Yeah. The logo is beautiful. The sign. The, 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 for us, the lobby, it's not just hard chairs. It's actually long couches with a little map light and, yeah. uh, and things for you to wait. They've got a photo booth to take your photo if you need a little photo for a document. They have a, a coffee shop. They have... A blood pressure machine and it's just right. it's just and, it, and they have a number system and it's fast and everything looks just so nice whereas in america our version of that is the department of motor vehicles where you get a license and that's a joke in america that, it, that you'll wait forever and the service is terrible um and it's just yeah. a bad bad experience but in russia it's absolutely the opposite which is crazy to me because it for those in the west I think russia is a bad place if it's such a bad place why do they have a facility like this why, why do they, you know, have recycle bins? You know, why would they care about such things? Why do they have safety rails everywhere? You know, even if it was just a normal place, they still wouldn't have to do all this stuff. It's like they go above and beyond what they have to do uh, for their yeah. citizens. And, and yet oh. I'm supposed to believe this is the bad guy place. It's crazy. So how do you find, do you, what, what's your level of Russian? Uh, it's as good as that guy who just ran behind me, my four-year-old. So we can it, we can communicate with each other. I take Russian lessons for ninety minutes twice a week. So I am practicing, and I can speak Russian well enough to buy food at the store and speak to my four-year-old, and um, you know, rudimentary things I can do. Plus, I think if if let's say you're thinking about immigrating here, if you are going to Moscow or Saint Petersburg, there's English options everywhere. Um, you should learn the language, but you don't have to master it before you come, if that makes sense. So, and I, I started practicing before I came here. So I definitely knew all the sounds of the, the letters of their alphabet. And so I can read. Um, and what I'm good at is, is reading and writing um, and speaking, not as much, but hearing someone speak Russian and knowing what they're saying, that's the hardest part. Because when someone speaks, they don't pause between their words. Just like I said, they don't pause between their words. I didn't say they don't pause between their words. You know, you know what I mean? What is something that you could leave the audience with, um, particularly for people who are thinking about moving to Russia or even just visiting and are worried that it's not a safe place? I mean, I guess if they've watched this the whole way through, they'll know that um, it's not quite what everybody thinks. But um, what would you recommend for people who are coming to Russia for the first time? Uh, well, I mean, I, again, I, I practice the language a little bit before you come um, and, you know, try to be um, not too nervous. Um, and, you, you know, seriously, watch Justin's channel and, and watch mine and, and you see. Him and I were very carefree here. Um, I mean, it's still on planet Earth. You still are interacting with people. You still need to be alert and careful. Um, but in my experience, it's way more comfortable and way safer than a Western country now. Um, and so if you're a Westerner thinking about coming here, um, I think you should definitely take a vacation first and see if, if you like it, see if it fits with you. It has certainly worked out for myself, and you could say, well, Joe, you have a Russian wife, but this guy, Justin, he doesn't have a Russian wife. He's having a great time here as well. Um, he still has to make money. He still has to work. He still has problems, just like I do, just like we all do. Um, but it might be a better fit for you. And if you're watching this and you're a Russian, uh, thanks for being a part of creating this culture, because uh, I'm 
really enjoying my life here. And it's not just about having a good time. Um, you know, I have one life to live. I have kids to raise and I want them to have a full life. I want them to be productive adults that help other people that make this world a better place. And, you know, if you're Russian, you have, you have been a part of creating this culture um, that I can raise my family in and that I can have a meaningful life in with traditional family values at a time when the West is having a hard time right now. And I don't hate my country, America. I don't hate Australia. I, but I do feel bad for them. And I hope that they will improve and things will change one day. And hopefully I can see it in my lifetime. But in the meantime, I have a life to live now. And, you know, I, I am grateful for this opportunity. Yeah. Well, thank you very much for that, uh, Joe. It was a pleasure interviewing you and getting to know you a little bit better and a little bit about your experience here in Russia. And uh, for everybody who's been watching, um, definitely go and check out uh, the Expat American. Uh, you'll see Joe over there and the other half of this interview. And uh, yeah, you'll see what um, one thing that I shared on his channel. Told anybody else, uh, certainly not on YouTube, and uh, yeah, there's many more other great uh, videos on his channel, so definitely go and subscribe to his channel. And um, yeah, thanks again for watching. If you like this video and might see more stuff like this, put a comment down below. And until next time, take care. I'll see you, yeah, later. Justin, and hopefully, we'll see each other in person and do a show together one day. That would be great, that'd be great for two reasons one, I get to meet you, and two. It means I'll be getting the car, hopefully. <laughs> awesome, dude. Uh, See you soon. Cool. Then. You know, and, and on top of that, um, another crazy story is when we were going to Estonia, because only I had to leave, um, my wife and our two, two young children together came with us because we would make a vacation out of it. We're a married couple. We want to stay together, right? So mm -hmm. um, you, you take a bus. They stop you. Uh, they open the doors, you know, Russian police come on, they check all your passports, you know, it's dark, it's nighttime, it feels like a Hollywood movie, like scary, you know, but there's nothing to be scared about. They have to check the paperwork, you know, but it's, it is interesting. Um, and then they get off and then the bus continues down the road, which is kind of the no man's land where you're crossing from, from one country to another. And, and in this case, it's, it's a bridge as well. Um, and then you get to go through the same thing all over again with the, the new country where they come, they check everything. And in this case, they had us get out of the bus and go through a facility that they have set up there on the border. And they checked our paperwork and our passports and we messed up. And my eight-year-old, Kristoff, his American passport had expired. And so Sonia was like, sorry, he can't come in. This passport is no good. Um, and so, you know, what do we do, right? It was crazy. Um, so we had to think really quick on our feet. And I, I was like, okay, I'll take the four-year-old, Maxine, with me, and I'll just go because I have to go. And, honey, you know, you will go back with yeah. Kristoff to Russia. And so we split up right there. But we had to kind of do it on the, on the spot. And we were kind of anxious. So I jumped back on the bus with just my four-year-old, Maxine. And as we're pulling away, I realized, oh, no. My wife has Maxine's Russian passport because you don't you don't need a visa if you if you have two citizenships like between um, the West right so if you're an, if you're a U.S. citizen you you have permission to because there's an agreement with the Western countries so you can you can go yeah. wherever within the U.S. and the Western countries without a visa right um, so if you have that and you have Russian citizenship you don't need visas you just use one passport to to get in and then another passport to get out and, and the reverse when you go the other way. And so I foolishly got on the bus and was rolling into Estonia. We were gone. There's nothing we could do about it. And I realized I did not have his Russian passport. So I was like, oh, man, how am I going to get my son back? Um, especially with all this oh, yeah. stuff. I didn't want to be over the border any longer than I had to. So what ended up happening is my daughter, my 18-year-old daughter, had to meet my wife in St. Petersburg. She had to give eight-year-old Kristoff to her, uh, Aurora, and then my wife had to get another bus ticket and cross the border into Estonia and meet us like two days later and then bring us back with Maxine. Uh, oh, Maxine wow. was Story. playing with cars behind me right now. So it's a crazy story. Oh, Maxine. And, and I guess I'll tell you right now that 
is a story I've never shared with my audience. So I was wondering what I might share here that my, hey Maxine, <laughs> my audience never heard. And, and there it is, guys. So for all my subscribers that switched over just to watch this interview, there's a secret. And now you're hooked. Now you're in love with Justin and you're going to watch his show as well. I know you guys are. <laughs> Thank you. Um, yeah, so, <clears throat> okay. That is quite a story. Well, guys, I hope that you enjoyed this video. Thanks for watching to the end. And hopefully you guys know a little bit more about the expat American and about what it's like for Americans here in Russia. So. Yeah, if you would like to see his interview of me, you can go in the description and I'll leave a link down there or you can click on one of the cards up here. Apart from that, guys, take care and we will see you on the next one. Bye-bye.